It had been four months since I was last at a political march. Since then, the face of British politics and Brexit as a whole completely changed. Party infighting and strong opposition to Theresa May's Brexit deal had caused the deadlock in Parliament. Previously, Britain was set to leave the European Union on March 29th, six days after the People's March. With the date of Brexit pushed further back into April 12th, this march could potentially have more impact on the path Brexit takes than previously thought. I arrived the day prior to the march, and although being a Leave supporter myself, I was interested to see what Remain had to offer. As usual, the now familiar scene of EU flags flown outside of Parliament was present. It was strange to think that only in a day's time, these streets would be filled with estimated millions of people, something that would completely overshadow Nigel Farage's march to leave, which only had around 100 people, although a £50 participation fee was required for his march. With only 24 hours to go, the stage was set for what could be one of the biggest political marches in modern British history. It was the day of the march, and the trains were full of marchers making their way to Park Lane, the starting point of the People's March. Already, I had seen countless banners and signs held by people old and young, and I knew that this march was going to be very different from that of the Brexit betrayal one. As I got closer to the main portion of the march, it became clear that there were many ways in which people were expressing their opinions on Brexit. For some, this involved literally swearing at Brexit, and others it involved a far more light-hearted method of singing. Almost everyone had a sign in hand. It seemed that everywhere I looked there stood a person advocating a people's vote. Before the march began, I took the opportunity to interview some of the people taking part. Speaking to these people made it clear to me not only how divided we are over Brexit, but also how divided we are over our own government. However, everyone seemed to agree that it was time for a major change in our political system. We weren't represented and we don't think that we were given accurate descriptions or explanations of what the results would be. What about the people who say that we should have another vote because we should respect the original vote in democracy? Do you think that maybe if there was a second vote, there could be riots and potentially a lot of damage done, even more damage done to the country? I think we're protesting not for a second vote of just another second referendum for the sake of um, it, but rather that Theresa May's deal is put to the people, that we get a choice on. Like initially, there was no say on what type of Brexit we'd have. And so I don't think it was initially fair that now we don't get a say in um, what form of Brexit is put forward, or whether that is again uh, no Brexit at all. What do you think about possibly the potential of uh, another election? Do you know who you would vote for in another election if that did happen? Right now, I actually don't know. There's yeah. no one that I feel that inspired by, or. And see you come forward. Hopefully, yeah. someone new. Someone new. <laughs> if a second referendum did happen, for instance, and leave one again, which some people are predicting would happen. Yeah. Would you, would, what would happen then? Would you want another another vote or...? No, not after that. If leave one again, but there would have to be... Oh, there's just so much more to leave than we think. There needs to be more... Much more time to kind of analyse it and consider like the consequences of it and put policy in place to make sure like we're secure. So, what, did you vote in the last referendum when it happened, yeah? If, if there was a second referendum, I assume you'd vote Remain. But if Leave did win again, would you respect that vote? If the debate is had about actually what Brexit means, not about a concept that doesn't exist. If there was a party that was like, right, we're just going to stop Brexit altogether, if you vote for us, we'll stop it. 
do you think they would have any chance of winning or do you think there would possibly be a lot of uproar from the you know the right or people who voted leave I think there's a bigger problem and it's not just about a people's vote it's the what the different options are are not represented by our party system so there needs to be some sort of split in the parties and a change in the party system so people can actually vote for what they want yeah because right now it's only really two parties isn't it yeah and, and they don't reflect people's views if for instance we do leave let's say we do leave when it comes to I think is it April now when we're gonna leave yeah, I think it's April. When we do leave, do you think that pe this, these kind of marches will stop or do you think they'll just keep, keep continuing? What do you think is going to happen to this side of the argument who wanted to remain? I think I, I think it will coalesce into something new. There's probably a, I don't know if it's a party or a movement or what, but like the last time we came here as well, the atmosphere is incredible. Everyone's so friendly, there's no violence. It's like, it's a nice place to be. So I would like it to do something else. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think, I mean, a new political party, I just don't think it's going to happen in, in like our landscape. But maybe it will be a push towards a different voting system. And actually, like, I think that's probably the best way to change politics in this country. Yeah. Because you're not going to have meaningful change with basically people voting on issues rather than really for parties. And yeah, first past the post does not really like yeah, enable yeah. that. I agree with you as well. I think it's not like for me, people's vote is not necessarily about a second referendum. It's this idea of everyone's vote should count. And for me, it's more about PR. It's more about um, actually our people's votes being listened to in a way that's meaningful. So that's why I'm here, not necessarily just for a referendum, but Brexit has to be stopped because it's uh, it's going to be a catastrophe. Yes. All right, cheers, lads. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thanks very much. I would say the first result or the first vote wasn't really um, clear at all. You're reducing a very complex problem into two binary choices, which don't you know we've, we've seen over the last three years. You can't make a decision on the way forward from that. Um, you know, you either have parliamentarians trying to take it over, which, yeah, you get the chaos you see the last three years, or you put it back to the people and you actually give real tangible choices, which is, you know, okay, right, what actual future state do you want? Do you want close alignment with Brexit? Do you want Brexit far away? Do you want all the shades of grey in the middle? You know, or maybe do you, do you think the best deals are the one they haven't already? Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't you think that would split the Leave vote completely and then Remain would just just win because? Yeah, but you just have single transferable vote, so you, okay, right, you rank yeah. your preferences, oh, and right, then yeah. and then so you don't, you don't split it at all. I've heard a lot of people who I've, who I've interviewed today saying that they would possibly like the way that our general elections work to yeah. change rather than first past the post we have something different. Would you agree on that? I totally agree. I mean, I think this the reason we're in the mess we're in right now is because we don't have representative democracy. I mean, like you know, democracy is good in some ways. It's not like completely terrible. But you end up in a situation where you have big political parties with huge parts of them that don't, don't you know, their, their, their views don't reflect a large part of their electorate. And our, our democracy has no way of, of, of really kind of solving that. Because we're so tribal, because we're so party-based, we do need to solve it from the ground up. It's a much bigger problem than just Brexit, totally. But this is, yeah, we can't, we can't afford to, like, sacrifice the next couple of generations because of one bad decision. It was time for the march to set off. Because I had taken some interviews, I was already far behind. I decided I'd make it my mission to try and get to the front of the march before we reached Westminster. However, that was going to be more challenging than I initially thought. Everyone was very well organised. Groups of bands and organisations all put on entertainment for the march. People were chanting and dancing the whole way down.
After a quick dance break, it was time to continue the march. As we entered the thin streets of the city, it became harder and harder for me to make my way to the front of the march. People extended as far as I could see to my front and back. Occasionally cheers would break out down the line. The sound was almost deafening. Both the political parties were represented at the march. I saw people from Labour and the Conservatives. We were now near in Westminster. The event organisers had placed billboards along the final stretch, which played promotional videos in support of a second referendum. As we passed Downing Street, chants and boos rang out with hopes that Theresa May would hear them. We were now just moments away from reaching our final stop. I may have failed to reach the front of the march, but I had made it just in time to catch the beginning of the many speakers at the event. We've seen how the government has ignored our warnings time and time again. It's time to say loud and clear Enough is enough. It's time to give the British people a final say. You know, the British people didn't vote for the government to gamble on our future. The British people didn't vote for the national nightmare that's been created. Some argue that a people's vote would be undemocratic. I say the exact opposite. What can be more democratic, what can be more British than trusting the judgment of the British people? This is about sorting out the mess and forging a future fit for our children and generations to come. Thank you very much. country and they do not speak for me. We can speak for ourselves. So let me say this with my chest. My community needs a people's vote. We want a people's vote and we're going to get one as well. I'm from a part of the world that voted to stay within the European Union by 62%. Yet this seems to have been totally ignored in the debate of recent years. I'm Scottish, British and European. I fundamentally believe that we are better when we are working together. Divisive nationalism solves nothing. 62% of women support a people's vote and I am one of them. Women continue to be 
grossly outnumbered in Parliament, only 4% of MPs are black, Asian or minority ethnic women. And it is women and minorities who will pay the price for Brexit just as we paid the price for austerity. Now, as some of you know, I, I was a member of the Conservative Party and I have now left the Conservative... No, no, hang on, calm down. No, 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 we're all together. Look, no, seriously, this cause is actually bigger than any political party. It is bigger than any tribalism. And it is what unites us. And we believe it unites the people in our constituencies increasingly. And I speak on behalf of all of us because I know we will put this cause and our country first. After the bulk of the speakers had finished, it was time for the main event. Steve Coogan, most famously known for his TV personality Alan Partridge, took to the stage to unveil a massive banner for the helicopters to see. Let me hear you say, stop this! Stop this! Let me hear you say, this is silly! This is silly! Let me hear you say, actually it's embarrassing! Actually it's embarrassing! Good, I just wanted to see if you could do those things. Okay. Um, well, it's great to be here, and uh, it's fantastic to see all these faces uh, out there. Um, people are going to do lots of things to support the, uh, the, the campaign for a, a second referendum. Uh, but my favourite group of people are uh, a group called Led by Donkeys. And they've been taking over billboards, hijacking them, um, which we don't always recommend, but it's okay this time. Uh, they've been taking over billboards and putting up messages that should support uh, the campaign. And the quotes that they've been using are quotes from Brexiteers who apparently agree with us. And what they're gonna do, what we're gonna do now is have a huge banner unfurled across the crowd. And I want you, when we start to do this, you all have to put your banners down. Put your arms up and help help us unfurl this banner across the crowd so the helicopter can see it. Hello, the people. And with that came the end of my second political march. Although still firmly being a Leave supporter, the experience of the opposition gave me a great insight into some of the reasons as to why people would oppose Brexit. Everyone at the march was cheerful, kind and cause no trouble. I ultimately believe that although as a country we are divided, people on both sides of the argument can unite over the troubling and testing times we have experienced with the failure of our government, and the times that are yet to come. Time will only tell how much of an influence the People's March will have over Brexit, but for now it will remain as a great experience for both myself and everyone who took part in it.